praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name for this wonderful time you are giving unto us once again to hear your word. Our prayer is that, O oh God, you lead us through. Guide us that at the end, glory and honor shall be given to your name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the God. Last week we learned about Christ begins his ministry. He began preaching the gospel, evangelizing, spreading the good news unto all the creation all over the world, everywhere he went. And here he could not do that work, he alone. Also the people, he had to choose some of the people that also are there, that are born again, they believe in his word and the gospel that he preached therefore to assist him in that task therefore today we are going to look at the people that he has chosen to help him in that task so we are looking at lesson christ ordains 12 disciples christ ordains 12 disciples let's take our memory verse from mark chapter 3 verse 14 mark chapter 3 verse 14 the Bible says that, and he ordained twelve, and they should be with him, and that he must send them forth to preach. Praise God. Let us say it together. Let's read that place. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. And he ordained twelve, and that they should be with him, and that they he might send them forth to preach. Praise God. Our, our text is going to be taken from Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 33. But we take it in bit. So, someone to read the first four verses. That is Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 4. Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 4. Are you there? Can read it for us. Once again he entered into the synagogue and a man with a withered hand was there. So they were watching him closely to see whether he would cure the man on the Sabbath in order to accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, get up and come to the center. Next he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath day or to do, uh, on the Sabbath day to do good or to do harm? to save a life or to kill, but they kept silent. After looking around at them with indignation being totally grieved at the insensibility of their heart, so he said unto the man, Stretch forth your hand, and he stretched it out. His hand was restored. Praise God. And the Pharisees went out, immediately began holding counsel with the party followers of Herod against him in order to kill him. Praise God. God. We see here that when the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ started, he had many followers. As I said from the beginning on the other previous topic, he began to do many work and preach everywhere. And when as he was preaching, many people were following here and there. But what happened is that as he had many followers, that means those who accepted his message, those who accepted the gospel, and they repented and they became what? Born again. So it reached a time whereby he needed to get people to assist him in that what? Job. Because he cannot go everywhere in all the corners. He needed to get people also to assist him in what? In that what? Work. So there came the necessity of choosing some group of people. And he chose these first 12 to help him in that what? Ministry. But the Pharisees and the scribes, they were not really happy of hearing that word. The ministry, they were not happy with the ministry of Christ because he was having many followers. He was having, he was gaining more attention. And then, you know, these Pharisees, they were thinking they were the people that people have to follow them for them to have, they're because of pride and all the rest. But they thought Christ is coming to take their glory from them. You see that? So they were not happy with what Christ was doing. That you could see that in Mark chapter 2, verse 3, uh, three uh, the second verse. He said that, and they watched him, whether he will heal the man on the Sabbath day, so they might accuse what? Him. 
So that is what you are seeing over here. The Christ ministry witnessed different kind of miracles with attracting to the people in his stead or at up hatred from the religious people. That's why we what you are doing. People are started what bringing what you call hatred. Praise God. Bringing hatred because they thought Christ was taking their 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 their, 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 their worship, their glory from them. But they didn't know that they themselves had to be born again. Christ was not there to take glory. He was there to the work of his word. Father, in this place, we're going to look at three points very quickly. Controversy over Christ's healing on the Sabbath. Controversy over Christ's healing on the Sabbath. Now, when you look at what? On the verse uh, 4, you can see that uh, verse 4 of the chapter 3, he said that the next he said unto them, Is it lawful for the Sabbath day to do good? to do harm, to save a life, or to kill. But they kept silent. After looking around, indignation, being totally grieved, they smeared his heart, he sent to the man, stretch out your hand. You see, they wanted to see whether they were going to do in the verse 3. They want to see what he would, he would, he would do. So, looking at verse 1 and verse 2, you can see that he said, And he entered again into the, world, the synagogue, and there was a man there with a withered hand, and they watched him whether he would heal that person on that Sabbath day, that they what they will accuse him. You see, they were ready to find a way of what accusation. You see that, but it was on, it was really the usual habit of our Lord Jesus Christ to go into the synagogue to minister, to go into the place, the church to to minister, to preach the gospel. You see, beside his disciples that had just been what uh, criticized for what plugging the ear of a con on the sabbath day now it's in the snuggle because they even accused his disciples that they went and what took a, uh, took some corn on the sabbath day and ate now the second day they are accusing jesus himself on the in the in the in the, in the church in the synagogue in the worship center that was did he heal the what that particular what we did hand person they closely watched and monitored whether he would what heal that guy or not that person or not that sick person or not they are sole aim for to what to monitor him so they might what find the fault and accuse him that is all but what he did there was nothing wrong there was nothing as fault in it praise god so we should know that people are like that in this world they are called them fault finding people we call them what fault finding people praise god so they were fault finding people you see they were looking closely to find fault and to accuse him that's what they were doing are you saying it but what do you do christian youth should avoid what fault finding attitude because it wastes time it's a waste of time you see daniel himself was a victim of it his enemies used the time they could have spent on the king's business monitoring an innocent word man you see they could have done many things they could not do it because they were just there monitoring the the, the uh, daniel to see whether he will go in his room and pray or not to see whether uh he will go and pray or not they were just monitoring to find fault and go and give the, the king that's all people are like that as children sometimes even in the church in the church you see the, this pastor is dead Tend to preach the gospel. What you are there, you are looking for a fault finding. You are looking for only a fault to laugh. Sometimes, even in the church, sometimes in the school, you are looking for a fault, a mistake that the teacher will commit, that you will laugh. All the things he taught you, the 99% of the note he gave you, no mistake. All this little mistake he did, the whole class will what? Explode in laughter and mockery. And they will use him as a nickname. You are looking for people that will make a little mistake in the class for you to mock them. As a child of God, it's not right. You come to the church. I remember some time ago, down one person said, "I don't want to go to the youth section to teach to preach them because they are there. When you go there, you are preaching to them. And you make a little mistake, a slip of tongue. They begin to do what? To laugh. Yes. So is it a good thing? No. You are not going to be there and then finding. You are only looking for a fault and then begin to create what a funny thing and be mocking that pastor that leader that uh, teacher of yours it isn't good it's not the right thing so when you are here you have to make sure that you avoid what you call fault finding praise god we should be very careful not to do that thing because it is a bad thing so any youth that is really hardened 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 heart 
What should that person do? Christian should not have any pleasure in the world on the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather what? Reprove them. You see? That means that what the meaning of the, uh, the, uh, the process of reproof may what? Display an element of disapproval and displeasure. However, Christian youth should only hate their works because of anger and hatred against the person is in sin. You are not hating the person per se, but you are hating the act that the person did. We don't hate sinners, but we hate sin. Praise God. You will not say, this guy is a sinner, therefore he is my enemy. No, you are hating the sin in him, the sin that he is doing. You are not hating that guy. You are not hating that person. No, you are hating the sin. Praise God. So, that's what we have to do as children of God. We are not going to, our reaction towards those who are hiding, hiding their heart. We are not going to hate them, but we hate the sin in them. And trying to make sure that they hear the word of God and they what? Abstain from this word. Sin. Praise God. My first question is, what should be the reaction of Christian youth towards hiding youth? Towards hiding youth. What should be our reaction? Towards those people that are very stubborn, those are sin, uh, sinful, they are in sinful acts. What should be our reaction, our attitude? Yes. We should try to do what? Preach the gospel to them. The moment we are not going to convert them. We cannot convert anyone to Christ. We only preach to them and Christ does the word. The Holy Spirit does the same or the rest. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. So we can see that in this play we are seeing that uh the this is nothing but jealousy and envy leading to malicious feeling malicious feeling yes this kind of malicious jealousy this kind of envyance this kind of uh maliciousness that is what these uh, pharisees were having towards christ was really a bad deed so you could show we should we could see that um, people that are jealous mm, because of others' progress, because of others' achievement, are often what resentful. This was the exact thing Joseph did, Joseph's what burden did to him because of jealousy. They try all their way to kill him. The same thing Saul did the same thing against David because of jealousy. You see. We really abstain from jealousy. Jealousy is an evil thing. And it's a try to what? God's punishment. Sometimes you are in class. You can jealous easily. This person has gotten 10 over 10, 100 over this. And then you are jealous of him or her. And then that person, you don't want him to talk to the person. This and that. And this person, you only show that you know too much. You this and that. That shouldn't be the case. This person is bringing this, this person is bringing money, you don't have it. This person is doing that, you don't have it. Are you going to jealous the person? No! That shouldn't be the same. That shouldn't be anything like that. And if you go, even go to the schools whereby people are trying to harm their own colleagues, their own comrades in class, simply because they know more than them. It's jealousy. And it's the same Pharisees oppose him. So that is what the, the that was the reason why they what they oppose Christ. They oppose Christ simply because of jealousy, envy. That's all. They thought Christ you want to take their uh, their glory. Question number two: Why was Jesus opposed by the Pharisees? Yes, yes, our sister there. God bless you. They were jealous of him because they thought he's coming to take their what? Their glory. Are you happy with somebody who they come, they give, the person has gotten the high note, and they say, let's clap for him. He has given the good result. Sometimes they say, clap, clap for him. You are sitting down there, you will not clap. Because you are angry, you are envious. A child of God, repent. Praise God. Two. Christ chooses his disciples. We're going to look at how Christ is going to choose his disciples. Let's look at Mark chapter uh, 3 from verse 13 to 16. And he got up into the a mountain and called unto him who he would. And they came unto him and he ordained to all that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils praise god 
car has many followers he has many followers that were with him but the work was really rapidly growing and progressing but he needed some of the what the people that what can be with him and help him to preach the what the word of god he can't go anywhere it's like our father lord today he cannot go everywhere to preach the gospel he can't do all the countries he need many people around him to you do this place go i also go here i preach the one next to me you preach the one next to me uh, next to you and then she also preach next one to her he also preaches next one to him then we all together what we win them one by one we will do that in jesus name somebody can ask me how long should a christian youth wait before preaching the gospel how long no the Christian, so the a Christian is how to preach the gospel immediately when he's born again. Immediately when he received the, the gospel. Remember this Samaritan woman. When she received the gospel at the what? The well. Christ preached to her. She got born again. What happened? She ran away straight, going to what? The town. Began to shout and say, Come and see a man who told me all that I what did. Look at it. She began to preach immediately. She did not wait for even a day, not even uh, uh, some hours. She began to what? To preach the gospel. We should do the same thing. Immediately, we don't need to give any special call onto the evangelic ministry like this. The Lord has given us power to go and preach the gospel. Immediately go and preach the gospel as immediately you have what? Received it. My question, how long should a Christian should wait before preaching the gospel? How long? How long? How long? Yes. As soon as, immediately, as you see the gospel. Go and testify of what Christ has done in your life. And others will benefit. Uh, we, 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 yes, we, we, we will really um, get into the benefits of what you have received in Jesus' name. So, can a senior youth be a disciple of Christ? No. Remember, we said the names of the 12 apostles were Simon, the surname Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of uh, Alphaeus. Now, you can understand that to the end of the list, Judas Iscariot would also betray what? Jesus Christ. You today can be disciples of Christ by receiving pardon from sin and living a virtuous Christian life. They must be ready to patiently learn from Christ about the mystery of the kingdom. They can preach the, uh, the word of God immediately. So it's only one, what? A child of God that can preach the gospel. A sinner cannot preach the gospel. He's preaching about who? His father is Satan. The only one he knows about is Satan. He's going to preach about who? You preach about the person you know. So, I was asking, can a sinner preach the gospel? Can he be a disciple of Christ? No. Unless what? He or she what? Repents. Praise God. Point, quickly, point number three. Christ correct the doubters. Christ correct the doubters. Now, while Christ continue, while Christ continue, to preach to the multitude, the number of things that are worthy of note happened. First of all, his friends came to him while he was with the multitude. You see, when he was preaching, they came and told him, Ah, in verse 21, he said, For they said, He is beside himself. Similar things are happening that those who claim to be our friends might come calling us names and trying to divert our attention from the work of what? The Lord. Sometimes when you are really a preacher, they can nickname you in the school. They call you pastor, they call you uh, of mommy, they call you different kind of names. Don't worry about that. Just go on and preach the gospel. Praise God. And then they can say many things. They can come and then be saying funny things. So they can divert the attention of your what? Your people that are listening to you. Are you going to pay attention to them? No. The, the Bible says in Mark chapter 3 verse 22 that and the scribe which came down from Jerusalem said he had Beelzebub and by the prince of the devil casted he out devils. Look at this. They were accusing him for nothing. They were just saying this guy, the powers that he has, the miracles, the wonders, everything he's performing is by the what? The power of the king of what? 
the demons. Yeah, but that's what Jesus told him that, ah, how can Satan chase Satan away? In the kingdom of God, there's no confusion. It's only that place. So, this is rather a harsh, uh, what call it, a harsh accusation that he had been using devil to cast out what? Devils. How can the devil's power be used to cast himself? But thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ, who he called them and said that unto him, and said unto them in parable, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise against himself and be divided, he cannot stand. But hard was an end. Praise God. So, Christ, did we are seeing here that Christ gave them this particular simple word re, uh, response, telling them that there is no way Satan can stand against himself. There is no way. So, in the kingdom of God, there is no controversies. So, this response of our Lord Jesus Christ also serves as what? As a lesson to the believing youth, we children of God today. <clears throat> Tell you as that what if we are really contradicting one another, we cannot stand. We are expected to support and complement each other in the body of what Christ. In this process, our Lord also gives us what the secret of overcoming the wicked one. That's why that's the reason why he told us in verse uh, 27 that he told us in 27 that that no man can enter into a strong man's house and what spoil his goods except. He will what? He will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his what? House. Praise God. So we see that while Christ tolerated what? The abuse and the insult of these Pharisees, he did not fall to warn what? Or he didn't fail to warn them of the in what? Inheritance, what? Danger of blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. He told them. That verily I say unto you, all sin can be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemy wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But if you blaspheme against, if you sin against the Holy Spirit, no sin can be what? That sin cannot be what? Forgiven to you. Praise God. Praise God. We are seeing that we Christ is telling us something today here. He said he has chosen his 12 disciples to preach the gospel, to help him, to assist him to what? In spreading the good news. Today, are you born again? Are you saved from all your sins? Therefore, you are being what? Called. Unless you are telling me you are a sinner. You are still in your sins. You are not born again yet. But I believe you are born again. And therefore, are you still preaching the gospel in your school? In your campus, wherever you find yourself, do you people know that you are a child of God? Or when you want to go to church, you put the Bible into what? A bag or you wrap it into something? So that people will not see that you are a child of God because they will, go, they will call you names. And those who are you with them, you are with you are with them. Do they know you are a child of God? I'm not talking about the church you are belonging to. Are you a child of God? That is all. I will tell you that no church will do what? Will save you, will send you to heaven. It is Christ only. No church. I don't believe me. I belong to this church. Me, I go to this church. No, the name of any church cannot save you. It is only Christ and only the word of God. Children can preach the gospel. God can use children, and He's still using children today to preach the gospel. And youth can do the same thing. We also can do it. Tell me, I can do it. I can do it. Only avail yourself to God and He will use you, what, mindfully. If you pray for some people in the school, you are preaching the God, they come and say, oh, pastor, this person says my stomach, this person says this worry for him, and this worry him or her. Then you put your hand there, you pray, and that person is born again, is healed. Do you know what will happen? Next time when you are preaching, they will listen to you. Praise God. Yes. Won't you be happy that you, you preach to someone, and you, you prayed for someone in the school, and the person got healed? So we, should, we are going to do the same thing. And God will be what? With us in Jesus' name. I want us to close our eyes and pray.
pray and say, God, I thank you today for teaching me this word. That I will continue to preach the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.